Oh, I'm reading my name. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Amanda Ferrari. <laughs> I'm an assistant professor in the painting and drawing area uh, department of art at UNM. Today is my honor to present our 2023 Frederick Hammersley Visiting Artist, Lucasa Brantman Verissimo. <laughs> and their artist talk. Uh, we can plan on an active experience this evening, about 45, 50 minutes from Lucasa with about 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A after. Um, the Department of Art is grateful to be gathered here today in partnership with the Albuquerque Museum. Good things happen when we make bridges and pathways between these big houses in our shared communities. Thanks to the museum team, Josie Lopez, Elizabeth Becker, Jessica Cole, Coyle, and um, Andres Martinez. Many of you are familiar with Frederick Hammersley's legacy and the Visiting Artist Program. Beginning in 2017, the Department of Art launched the program which invites prominent contemporary painters to come live and work in Albuquerque. Funding for this program is provided by the Frederick Hammersley Visiting Artist Program Fund at the Albuquerque Community Foundation. The mission of the Visiting Artist Program is to honor the legacy of Frederick Hammersley and expand awareness of his life and work through the establishment of links to painters working today. Through this program, visiting artists are provided with accommodations at the Hammersley House, an honorarium, a studio in proximity to our graduate students, and the visiting artists are invited to create work, conduct studio visits, hold workshops, deliver a public lecture, and host an open studio event, which is next Friday. So not tomorrow, but the following Friday, April 28th, 4 to 6 at the Annex Studios. There are flyers by the door, so you can remember that. So take one if you'd like that. <clears throat> so, a big thank you to the Albuquerque Community Foundation, Kaya Griff, Griffiths, and the Hammersley Visiting Artist Program Fund Advisory Board, some of whom are here tonight, uh, for their partnership with this ambitious program. Thank you also to the Department of Art team, Jacqueline Lay, Meg Elcock, and Danette Peterson for all your help on the ground. Now, Lucasa Branfman Verissimo is an artist, activist, educator, storyteller, and curator who lives and works between Ohlone Land, Oakland, California, and Powhatan Land, Richmond, Virginia. Through a practice based in painting, the printed multiple, community-based work and organizing, performance and installation, they invite the viewer to recall and share their own lived narratives, offering power and weight to the creation of a larger dialogue around the telling of black, indigenous, queer, trans, POC stories. In the spirit of Hammersley, Griffin Verissimo's work carries on the legacies of formalism, relational color, and the poetics of abstraction. Their practice remixes tradition with a sharp socio-political urgency. Their work is receiving notice internationally for this prescient combination that reflects acutely the times in which we live. Their paintings operate somewhere between signs, posters, quilts, and memorials. Their work tests the boundaries of what we might expect and ask from a painting practice in today's crisis-laden world. They receive their MFA from VCU and a BFA from CCA, I guess that's Virginia Commonwealth University and California College of the Arts. Uh, they've had solo shows all around uh, at September Gallery, Delhi Gallery, Printed Matter, all in New York. Their work has been included in exhibitions and performances at Kunsthal C in Sweden, Stockholm, Leslie Lohman Museum, EFA Project Space, both in New York, the San Francisco Arts Commission, Yerba Buena Center, ugh, Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, Berkeley Art Museum, Pacific Film Archive, and more. They've been There we go. They've been awarded residencies and fellowships at Black Space Residency, Kala Art Institute, Women's Studio Workshop, Acre Residency, Vermont Studio Center, and Common Field. And Case's artist books and printed editions have been published by Endless Editions, Childish Books, Press Press, and Printed Matter, Inc. Help me welcome Lucasa.
all the ingredients laid out in a sharing of sacred curriculum. In process and in pain, flight school emerges here before our eyes and is held with deep compassion. All ingredients out. Community fridges filled. Here at flight school, we fly with eternal wings because it's up to us to protect us. Seven classrooms, seven characters, enacting flight school. Seven chapters, seven layers of the cake, seven materials to make this meal with. The sky, transitional friendship, winged, wind, timekeeper, crush, stack of books. Flight school is dedicated to shutting down the house and demanding gun control to Justin Jones in a white suit, a flight suit. White for clouds, white for Oshun, white for fresh snow. Dressed in all white for the 1917 silent protest parade organized by the NAACP against police brutality and the sea of folks wearing white for so many black liberation marches in the summer of 2020. Flight school. For the flight, breath, breathing, safety, care, prioritization, love of Ralph Yarrell, and all black youth, teens, elders, babies, adults, ancestors, and those not yet born, and to my grandpa Reuben, who always kept a kite in his trunk. Roots and webs and nets and branches and bulletin boards and banners and newsletters and mutual aid text threads. And kin and caretakers and porches and poems of today and spaces of survival. And enmeshment and disentangling and healing and growing and boundaries. And wings and flight and soaring and soaring and rest and feeling supported, and wind and grief and power and dust and lilac blossoms. We webs rooted in flight, wings large enough to be bulletin boards, banners becoming kites, mutual aid text threads as lube for community care, care packages as beautiful as clouds before the sun sets. Rage yelling the poems of today, soaring and soaring as survival. Survival as creating new views to look through. Loving as a net, mesh, basket, vessel. Resting because black rest is today's news. And making our own news that doesn't cause trauma, but rather shares our flight stories. Nuance gusts of wind, powerful enough to free them all. Enmeshing our kin to become a stronger family, poetry defining boundaries, defining dust. Transitional friendship. Thank you so much for being here tonight and happy new moon. I want to thank the UNM Art Department, the Painting Department, the Frederick Hammersley Foundation, Amanda Carreri. Thank you so much for being a guide, host, and comrade here. Welly Fletcher, Sue Han Ho, David Martinez, the Fine Art Library, Freddie's Cloud Mural the Annex Building Studio Home, new friends and the views that have held me here, and to my lo beloved Webbers in flight, Kimmy, Lee, Augustine, Cody, Emily, Sarah, Stephen, Finney, Hanson, Poets Union, and the many stacks of books in my writing desk, sunroom, backpack, and studio. All the layers are important. And to my mom, always my role model.
There is something about transitional friendship that just feels like flight, conjuring up wind and demanding we be pen pals. Allowing distance because we so close always. Transitional as in trans, as in transitioning always into our multitudes. Transitioning in and out of home spaces, home bodies, flying bodies, soaring bodies. Expansive breeze bodies, fag bodies, sick bodies, sticky bodies, rain cloud bodies. Always, always with friendship so close with kin so close, always with a transit path under our wings. Always, always with movement. Always, always with homes and living rooms and couches on our backs. Always, always tiny envelopes with seashells, elm puddles that look like smashed popcorn, milky oat tinctures, the first word of your favorite poem, neon pink mountains, dog food, Woven tongues singing ballads of resistance, crinkled newspaper, Toni Morrison stamps, and flag nylon. Winged. The principles of bird flight depend on air and or wind. Less pressure down and more pressure up, a cycle of slower and faster and the wing. Breath and or wind, continual solidarity and courageous journey, self-trust community as material, nuance, the winged wing, learning to fly free. Under your chair is a piece of paper, mm -hmm. the color of clouds, of the Albuquerque sky, midday, no clouds, an early morning pre-hail, light blue, but then again darker than the clouds, but then again the sky is every color here, and all our eyes see it differently. Flight school. that all views are kites being held by the negative space and the surrounding place. Katie sent me a video of a viewfinder held up to the camera of a blur of blue and white, maybe a sky, who knows, but a slow pan on a view that holds a slow look, the way wind holds a kite on a really windy day. Hold this piece of paper up to the ceiling to the folks next to you who you may or may not know. <laughs> Let this tool be an invitation for activation for our time together. A kite for the eyes, heart, breath, collective being. A hole in a peach ring, an empty 35 millimeter slide. All CDs have holes and all records do too. Negative space becoming a window, one eye closed to reveal clarity of what's beyond. The letter form of an O or a zero. A camera small enough to fit in your palm. The way an agave plant makes spirals. When two bodies embrace, they become a window, says Billy Ray Belcourt in History of My Brief Body. Mesh, a spider web, a bite, made by a worm in a leaf. My hands cupped open, blue sky shining through a ring of clouds, a note card with a tiny rectangle cut out of the center of it. A door opening in a gust of wind, our hearts opening in a gust of wind. So 20 of you have sentences of text attached to your viewfinder. That is a line from the viewfinder manifesto that I've been writing for the past many years. I would love for these lines to be read aloud, maybe by you or by a neighbor if you don't feel comfortable reading it yourself. 
as clues for a more deeper understanding of this new tool that we all hold in our hands. If you have number one next to your line, can you start us off? And so on and so on. Let's try. All viewfinders are intimate invitations to look close and slow down. An invitation to move at the pace of slow. A click of a photo of a touch so light. A record of a walk kept in our palm, in our pocket. A trace of our eyes of the path of today. A print of a multitude of broadcasts. A window, blurry with light, clearing for a minute to let us in close. What number are we on? <laughs> <laughs> Eight. 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 Oh. All right. A shadow that gets crisper when held by a friend. <laughs> A view that expands all frames and burns all forms of restriction. <laughs> A view that holds and centers us and brings us close when we feel far. A view that expands and imagines new ways of living. Rituals as active tending to spaces. A trust in the mutual holding of Uh, maybe I was the early. Yeah. <laughs> the viewfinder is a ritual, a commitment of returning to an invitation to move at the pace of slow. Mm -hmm. Rituals as active tending to spaces, a trust in the mutual holding of. The viewfinder as a ritual and an action, viewfinder, walk, wander, journey, flight. This tool gives us power, a trace of our eyes of this path of today. Mm -hmm. This tool is a whole, go through me, it's saying. Mm -hmm. This view asks to be located in relation to in relation to our lives. I move slow to look close, we move close to stay slow. Mm -hmm. This little tool that you can see, breathing, We are practitioners of the viewfinder. <laughs> Thank you, Flight School, students of flight, practitioners of the view. Let's play for a few minutes with this new tool in our hands. Feel free to chat with your neighbors about what you are finding or looking through or how you are feeling. Stand up if you like or stay seated. Take pictures. Yeah, looks like there's a few places to sit. 
the folks want to come sit and relax. Coming, but it is also a state of being, a character, a curriculum, a classroom, a reality, a material that wraps this spring up in a hug. <clears throat> Flight school, the certification of flying, the allowing of oneself to be held in air, off the ground, in the earth, in our arms, to be certified not by the broken systems that disempower us, but rather by the very feeling of surrendering to what's possible. That flight is soaring, being held, being swept up off our feet, easefully living, flight as lube for long lives for trans and non-binary folks, support, reparations, occupation, Liberation, abolition as flight, loving harder as flight. Flight as in all wind is grief. School as in the act of learning with new patterns and shapes attending to the soaring and returning and returning again and again work that school and learning and listening requires of us. Hugs for flight school fuel. Because when we use our eternal wings, we soar together. We are reminded that schooling ain't a solo act, but a collective practice. That arms full of books is soaring. That looking through the tiny window in a camera is an act in slow looking that homework read in the bathtub is care, and being inside questions feels like flight. Slowly moving with wind behind it and to the side, a bloom freshly popped open and slid off its stem, off its tree self into the sidewalk, trying to walk, no, no, trying to fly, yes, yes, fly across the sidewalk, skim across my eye like a white winged moth. Timekeeper, as in the sacred role of holding memories. Wings span as in circles, as in this is my wingspan, as in circles, as in clocks, as in time keepers, as in this is a winged center where we not keep time. Flight, grief, breath, blur, glitch, wind, whisper, shine. Sick at home in Freddy's house with bright spring desert light pouring in through all the windows. Sky visible, clouds visible, blinds up to bring the outside in and up close. Air hug style, flight school. 
friends that I've had for two and a half months bring me citrus and soap and berries and bread and vitamin C, candles, cookies, CBD, gummies, air hugs. Flight school, queer kin, comrades, caretakers, aunties, uncles give me rides to the ER, read aloud over the phone, voice memos, love notes, photos of their cats. Flight school is here, it's now. It's practiced in open daylight and on airport runways, and it's felt in deep soul space, deep joy, never alone. Never, never alone. It's the moment of care for the caretakers that l allows us to take off and be held. Air hugs, we fly. Flight school, a flight path. Map covered my chest like a topographical map. Flight school. Tiny nodes of arms reaching out to keep this web taut enough for me to stretch across. Nodes as group chats, care packages of herbal caramels and reminders to keep sleeping and wet kisses and playlists for the long drive and a bowl of hot soup and dripping red candle wax shaping a perfect heart shape and pictures of the sky to be compared to my sky and letting my phone die, and letting myself die, and cracking open my whole mouth to scream and voice memos that remind me we are close, and chart readings, and read aloud, and read aloud is hot, and poets union, and poems texted back and forth. Breath, lungs, welcome, it says. Because when you are held by many hands in this web of care, you are flying. Because when you lean back on a practice so rooted in caring for others, that care of many holds you back. To be held in this flight, learning how to surrender to the care that sits on the altar and is the process of taking flight itself construction paper folded in half to hold the first series of winged beings. A canvas bag filled with books on moths leans against my studio door. It reads winged resistance on the inside cover of the largest book. Keep cutting, drawing with scissors for winged resistance. Winged resistance is flight. You say they look like a rib cage. He, say, he said they look like squash. And I said, wings, breath, fruit, flight. Fix, fuck, forage, say the brown queer femme disability justice practitioners who root this flight always and forever, who remind us that we must fuck up systems trying to prevent our flight and hearts, train our people in our care needs, demand seating and masks and the most tender of touch. We fly in clarity for dusty breath, blurred transformation, glitch survival, fruit drizzled in lime, foraging new views with our eyes on top of each other, fucking to fix, always fixing when we fuck it up. All winged beings becoming viewfinders in brown construction paper, a material so rooted in flight 
windows to look through, wind to fly to, pink cherry blossom petals coat the sidewalk like pink snow, reminding me of the way purple jacaranda blossoms do the same at home, and petals getting stuck in your eye during the first March windstorm. Crush. Blessed are my friends who are actually kites flying in the wind, asking us to see, feel, hold, listen in new ways. The folks who check in on me and send me blurry tulip twin flame dyke news packages full of paper and kites. There is flight and then there is wind and sometimes they go together and sometimes not flight school. To close the eyes again like two kisses wishing me good night, alarm off, wake up with the sun that keeps on shining. Crush as practice, as coalition, as reminders that the heart is a muscle and we always learning how to use it. Crushing as a multiple, a print of desire, that all crushes are prints and multitudes getting stronger every day. That crushing is a printmaking practice. A trace of one's flight onto another. Oh, how lucky are we. States of being as flight, wearing wings as protection, as tending to a ritual of forever. Being and being in flight. Being black and being in flight. Being a dyke and being in flight being a crush and being in flight, being sick and being in flight, being in between the state and the people and being in flight, being in a constant state of being and being in flight and asking for this flight state to be a place of rest care, breath care, being in love and being in flight, weaving desires, dreams, laughs, care, poems, sage, and moon slivers in that flight, because here at Flight School, our studies are all ingredients in this big soup. Flirt union meetings to strategize how and when we make clouds that kiss. Stack of books. Asking the students of Flight what has been giving them wings these days. And this is what they say. Asking the students of flight what flying feels like, and this is what they say. Here at Flight School, our stacks of books connect our tables to the sky. So tall, these stacks are bridges and paths and guides to higher flight. We pay our respect to the stacks and get lost in all public libraries. We love on the writers and artists and editors and bookmakers and librarians and sky archivists to the slivers of public services that support this flight, flight school. 
Zach sent me a picture of a blue tie-dyed shirt at the thrift store that said in big curved font, enjoy flying. So I will. And I invite you to, too. These past three months, searching for flight, always asking for hands and hearts, and releasing the muck, always to let in the yum. Becoming brevity, breath, okay, let's begin. Thank you. I think we have time for a little bit of Q&A. Um, if folks have questions, um, I'm here. This is a beautiful quote that my friend Katie texted me the other day. Um, so calling her in as we talk and look through our viewfinders together. There's no mic, so just speak up and use our time together. Can you say that again? When today have you felt the flight, your flight? Mm. I think when I was practicing this, reading aloud, reading aloud this piece for all of y'all in my backyard earlier this afternoon, and also when all of y'all were looking through your viewfinders together. Lucasia, thanks so much for your words. And also to the viewfinder, I realized that the only time I ever hold something that close to my face is my phone. And I realized, oh snap, that's my viewfinder. No. Um, and seeing your images and how some of them were blurry reminded me that uh, there is beauty in uncertainty and mm -hmm. in um, not having clarity about certain things. Um, what are other strategies that you have found in um, using kind of that blurriness that uncertainty in order to slow down uh, within a space, especially like academia, which is always asking for certainty. <laughs> Good long question. <laughs> Good long um, thoughts from you. <laughs> um, I like to think of the blur or like the glitch at, as a material that I practice with. So. Um, I think a part of that question that I'm remembering um, is um, like when we are reminded or remind others to focus on what, because I think so much of maybe academia or like straighter thought thinking spaces are to um, like blur out the blur. But like all of the blur and all of the fuzz and all of the glitched spaces and the clearing that we're making is like not the thought that gets centered. And so um, I think my thought around like including some of those blurry photos and asking us to kind of like look slower and look closer at our world in different ways is that like reminder of the ways that we always live in the blur, especially as like marginalized bodies and folks that are, you know, redefining how those spaces can be for us or how they should all just be burnt down anyways and we'll use the ashes to make our own school. Thank you. Um, I enjoyed in some of your images uh, the negative space used as like a way of framing too. Um, and I'm curious what happened to all of the shapes that um, from our viewfinders. What are they from? They're in a little recycling bin. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I mean, my roots are in printmaking and um, is so much on like the creation of like the image that then goes on the page. But what about the 
love of like the page that is around the image or all the other like history and knowledge that goes into like placing that thing on paper. So I think the viewfinder kind of like does that opposite thing for me. Like I make images my whole life. That's how, what I love to do, but like what happens to all the other space and, and environment around it. Yeah, I was cutting like 300 mats and it was like I had all of these perfectly good like negative space objects and it was kind of like what, I don't know, what do you do with that? What do you do with the thing that you is can like make taking really, away? You can make really small viewfinders. <laughs> lately because I think especially inside of like really long-term friendships that are queer it's, it can get really ambiguous sometimes and I wonder where and how you use the word and if it feels necessary to distinguish it from mm -hmm. other things that just navigating that you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah so the like the seven sections of the um, of the flight school offering today, I'm kind of thinking of as like characters in flight school. Like I've been also like writing a small play with those characters. And so um, I like thinking of like the crush as like, it's totally like this like physical feeling that we all have or have felt. Um, but like what, how does one like in Body, the crush, like the crush feeling, as also the ways that we like embody other ways of moving around the world. Um, so yeah, I don't know, playing around with that, but um, totally like a an admiration space to be in. Okay, so you're saying kind of like just the archetype of it, and then exploring it like all over the place. Yeah, I mean it could mean whatever it means to yeah. like it means some I don't know why. totally different thing to you, which I love too. Um, yeah, and it also is like so like you know, let's talk about our crushes. Why not? Like that's a tool, you know. Like if we're gonna support each other's flight, like what is the support of like loving our friends look like? Um, Uh, I really appreciated what you shared today uh, and how I felt like there was so much about movement and I'm wondering how movement has come into play in this practice. Mm -hmm. I think it started by moving here. I drove from Virginia to New Mexico and that was like my first big movement practice that was a part of flight school. Um, and you watch clouds move so fast here. And I'm like <laughs> deeply in awe of this land's holding of much movement. Um, and I think a lot of my work documents and tells stories of survival and doesn't always emphasize like the movement or the work that has been done or the work that we are doing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where I'm interested in like more flight, like more movement, like how, what are the survival stories, but what are also the soaring stories that we tell side by side. Uh, so it seems like, um, from what I've seen of your work, there's a lot, you use text a lot, obviously you're working with words a lot, and I was wondering, um, with reversals or illegibility, what it is that you're seeking in that? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think as someone who's using text all the time, and text is such a tricky medium to use because of its legibility, um, I'm always thinking about new ways and the other ways that we tell stories and the kind of going back to uh, the first question around like the blur or the glitch, like how do, um, 
who should who should understand these stories or who are these stories for and um, the kind of like illegible moments being like a a, a play with like maybe it, it can only be read by one person or like by some or maybe you just hold and read the feeling instead of reading the text um, so um, yeah I've been playing around with like creating new alphabets and um, thinking about other like letter forms while I've been here as kind of a um, like continuation and like bringing in of all the different like senses and ways that we like hold and remember and read stories. Um, sometimes it feels really important that it's clear um, and sometimes that clarity doesn't feel like it's actually a part of what I want people to know of the story. Um, I think sometimes think of flight as being like a risk because of fears or concerns. And I wonder if you think about that, all because in your discussion it's like flight has this effervescence, mm -hmm. but if that also comes into flight, flight. Or mm -hmm. what else, what other? Yeah, I think there's risk and like all of that intermixed or at least that's what I'm thinking about when I was writing this offering um, that like flight in many ways is kind of like like we think of flight and we think of like uh, or whatever you know or like asking people what flight feels like it feels like being held by the water or the wind but the flight is also like inter so intermixed in our everyday and that um, when are we like allowed to fly, or when does flying even feel like it's something that we can grasp? Or um, yeah, so I'm thinking about all those things kind of intermixed, and um, yeah, it's been fun to kind of like dream a little bit into the like yummy of flight because I don't find myself often going there with my work, um, but then. Yeah, of course, like also being like, this is so real and this is like, flight is scary and I can relate so much to that part. So, yeah, maybe asking for all the sides of flight. That might be a good moment to stop, yeah? yeah. Thank you very much.